Now you're ready for the good stuff. I mean, uh, as we joke, we're going to talk about elections, and after that, we're going to talk about religion. This is going to be a great broadcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great one. Great one. Yeah. Maybe we should put our timer really short. Exactly. All right, I got a few questions to set this up. I love these questions. Um, first one, I fear for our country if the Democrats are elected. What precautions should I take if that happens? I have another question. What is the worst case scenario if Trump is reelected? All right, we're in election season. Emotions are high. People are fired Emotions up. High. They are fired up. Yep. It's very polarizing. Let's go have a conversation on elections as it applies to our investments. Yeah, we won't get into politics, but let's take a look a little bit of the data around presidential elections. You know, the reality is people do get very fired up on this topic. And, and I think that that's probably a good thing, especially when you get the opportunity to, to vote for the person that's important to you and aligns with your values. But as we start to think about what does that mean for our money, let's take a look at that. So what we did is we went out there and we looked at all the presidential election years. You can take U.S. data back to 1926. Over that time period, you got 24 elections that took place. Uh, here's positive versus negative. I think that's a good place to start. And what do we see? We see more positive election years than we see negative election years. And just like we showed on the debt, shouldn't be surprising about that. Markets tend to go up more than they go down. Average return in election years, 11 and change, pretty strong returns. Here's where your highest year in 28 and your lowest year in 2008. Now let's overlay political affiliation right on top of it. And, you know, what do we see right there? I think that that's pretty tough to make any type of argument. Mark, you see a pattern in that data? One might argue, I, well, no, I don't. But <laughs> look at the negative years. Maybe you're starting to read into something there. Three I mean, three. that's a lot of observations <laughs> over almost 100 years, three or four years there. I think you might want to be careful on that one. I went and looked at all other years. Uh, average returns looks uh, pretty similar. And uh, here you go, Mark. There's your uh, Democrat versus Republican argument uh, <laughs> uh, right there. But, you know, I mean, that's just, uh, it's really hard to draw a conclusion between this person's in the, or this person is getting elected in this year and what's going to happen in the stock market return. Well, we love data. We love looking into that stuff to see if there are any patterns out there. And of course, yeah. if there were, we'd be, we'd be highlighting that one. In this particular case, you are looking at, is there a pattern of when somebody is actually elected to the returns of the market that calendar year? Yep. But one might say, well, you should really look a year later. Meaning, okay, they're elected in November, but once they get in the office, now they have an impact. What's the next year of returns? You've looked at that as well. Yeah, let's look at years after presidential elections. So again, we're going to have 24 uh, of those over the course of our analysis here. And let's first look at positive versus negative. What do we see there? Well, actually, you see more negative years in that time period after uh, the U.S. election, uh, 10 versus 14. You know, again, if you look over the course of all years, about 25% of the time you see negative, 75% of the time you see positive. So election years, four negative, post-election years, 10 negative. I don't know if I'd read really too much into that. Average return, again, pretty darn strong returns. Here's your highest return and here is your lowest return. And then we'll go ahead and we'll overlay the political affiliation over the top of it. And again, I mean, you know, you made the joke about the Democrats here. We can make the other piece and be like, well, actually, the Republicans in this case have seven of the 10 negative years. And it's when they were in control of the White House. So maybe it's the Democrats that are good for markets. <laughs> but all of it is really just it's, it's really just noise. But then I think the question becomes is, can you do a deeper analysis? Can you go a little bit deeper when we look at economic data. And that's what we did here on the next slide is we said, well, what if we played a little bit of a game here to say, let's give you more information about what happened with some strong economic indicators. And then we'll ask two questions. One, what did the market do? And then two, who's the president? So let's look at unemployment, annual inflation, budget deficit, and GDP growth. Again, I think some big economic indicators that people would say, oh yeah, that gives me valuable information on what the market's going to do. Here's the first numbers. Unemployment, 7.8%. Annual inflation, 2.3%. Budget deficit, and by the way, that's cumulative over this administration, 15%. And then GDP growth of 2.2%. We can compare that where you've got higher unemployment at 10%. Annual inflation comes in a little bit lower, much, much larger budget deficit, and then weaker GDP growth. Now, Mark, in which case do you think most people would say, yeah, the market's probably going to do better? I have to go with the left side. When you look at some of those metrics relative to the right side, that just to me gives a stronger economy, stronger growth, probably stronger earnings, and thus probably stronger returns in the market. I think that's completely logical. But here's what we see with stock market return. On the left-hand side, you've actually got 
negative 4% annualized over this administration. And on the right-hand side, you've got 16% annualized over the administration. So even if I gave you the economic data, it's really hard to say what markets are gonna do. Now the question is, who's the president? I think we wanna pull the audience. So let's pull one. the audience. Again, for those of you that are listening in here, who do you guess is the president? I'm gonna say on the right-hand side here. So let's go to the right-hand side. The left to me gives you too many clues. Let's go to the right-hand side. Who do you think is the president of that particular economic data set? So Jake, is we're getting some number, uh, some guesses coming in here. Somebody made a comment about the way I say volatility. Uh, Mark says I say it funny, <laughs> but he is from Ireland, I have to say. So you know, I'm not sure what his, uh, <laughs> Maybe what, where that's coming from. Okay, uh, John has given the correct answers. Uh, we got quite a few of the correct ones coming in here. A lot of references to Obama, and John mentioned Bush and Obama. So, spot Boom. on. Well we done, got, John. We got an educated audience. Yeah, well an, done. An educated audience. But let's you know let's take this and maybe dive into a little bit more of the details because Mark, there's other things that are going on besides just them being in the White House. Yeah, so let's look at some of the other presidents here and just take a broader look at the return experience of various presidents in their time period. But I'm going to go to uh, Bush real quick here. And you just showed that one. Circle the dates there. So just to highlight that time period, negative returns under uh, GW. But that's the lost decade. A lot of people talk about that lost decade, those 10 years where we had this negative return. But just to ask the question, do you really think Bush was responsible for the tech bust? And that recession that he kind of took on in the first part of his administration, was he responsible for the financial crisis in 2008 that were part of those returns? I think that's a hard stretch to say this results in this. Same thing for Obama. Was he responsible for the fantastic market uh, rebound we had in March of 09? I don't know. It's hard to say that. I look back prior time. Let's go back to earlier days, the Ford time period. You got that circle there. So uh, Ford had the best return experience of any of the presidents on this particular page, which I think the irony is interesting in that um, I think he's the only one that wasn't even elected to the presidency or vice presidency, yet he had the best returns. So maybe us voters, we're the ones. It's the voters' fault is the what voters it is, fault <laughs> on Some of this, we should get better at who we're electing for market returns. But again, I go back to the patterns here. Is there anything that tells us, depending on who is running the government's it tells us something about future returns and better returns going forward. And what if you did play that game? You know, what we did is we went, took a look at that to say, hey, you're making this strong argument that this party or this person is gonna be good for the markets or I feel so strongly, here's what I wanna do with our money. So let's imagine this, is, is that you feel very strongly about the Republican Party and a Republican being in control of the White House. If they are, you're invested in the market. And now, Democrats in the White House, you're out of the market. You do not like that. How would you have done over this time period? Well, if you had a dollar back in 69, it would have grown to $19 over this time period. Now let's flip the coin around. You do not like the Republicans. You feel very passionately that the Democrats are best for the economy and ultimately best for the stock market. How would you have done? Well, you would have had $127, so substantially, substantially better. But then, of course, if you stay invested the whole time, your dollar would have grown to over $200. And to me, this chart right here really drives home the point that we've seen a lot of different presidents. We've seen a lot of different tax levels. We've seen high inflation. We've seen low inflation. We've seen wars. We've seen technological advances. And through this whole time, as I like to say, markets tend to go up and to the right. And you know, you really think about that. So if Kamala Harris comes into the White House in November, is GM gonna stop making cars? They are not, right? If Trump's elected, is Amazon gonna stop delivering boxes to my house? They are not, as I like to joke, my second career of breaking down cardboard boxes on a Saturday is completely <laughs> safe, no matter who goes into the White House. And it's just a good reminder that you're not investing in that person, but you're investing in companies within an economy. They'll figure out how to make money regardless of who's running the country. And it highlights to me, it's time in the market, mm -hmm. right? And vote, vote with your voting, don't vote with your investment savings. Now, you were highlighting that with presidents. Let's That's take right. a quick look at Congress as well. Is there anything at the level of the House or the Senate that tells us something about market returns? So we're looking at here, here's our calendar year returns for the S&P 500. Let's put some color around this in terms of who was in charge of Congress during this time period. So when you see blue, Democrats had control of the House and the Senate. When you see red, Republicans had it, then it was mixed, it's white. So I look at this and look for patterns. What this tells me is there's a lot of really good years in the market. 
whether Democrats have controlled it, Republicans, or it's been mixed. I guess the only pattern that would jump out to me is on the negative side. I see a lot of blue and a lot of red. Um, not much white. So again, maybe as a voter, we want a mixed. Maybe we do. We want a mixed Congress know. there. <laughs> maybe that's better. In some of those negative returns. I just don't see patterns to change my investment decisions. Now, the one thing that does bother me a little bit about presidents is I do hear the comment, uh, even with investment, that it doesn't matter. And, and I don't actually think that that's the right comment, you know, or that, or that it doesn't have an impact on stock prices. And I think that's the wrong way to look at it. You know, who the president is, does it have some impact on stock prices? I got to believe it does. If you believe in the efficient market hypothesis, all relevant information is incorporated into prices. I got to believe who the president of the United States is has an impact. It's relevant information. But does it give me a signal on what I'm supposed to do? I also really want to hit on this point of it's not that it's not important as well, right? Citizen of a country, we want people in power that align with our values and support our views. It is important. It just doesn't give me an indication what to do. Go back to the stuff we talked about around the Fed. Is the Fed funds rate important? You bet it is. It has a major impact on the economy, helps determine uh, interest rates for auto loans, for home loans, all of that. It just doesn't give me reliable information on what to do with my money. The debt, is it important as a citizen? I got three kids, you care about this stuff as well, but do I wanna make investing decisions on it? That's when you start to get yourself into yeah. trouble. Excellent, well said.